It's MikeFarrellRivals.com with Mark Stoops from the University of Kentucky. A uh, small class, but a good one. Ranked 32nd in the country with 18 commitments and a real strong finish today. Um, let's talk about Trevin Wallace before we get into the rest of the class. This is a kid who I've described as a Harold Landry type. Um, you know, just a, a, a gem in Georgia that a lot of people didn't know about. Yeah, absolutely, Mike. Um, you know, a guy that really blew up his senior year. Everybody really knew about him when he was younger, but then he got injured uh, his junior year and kind of set him back, but just had a monster senior year and just did everything. What I love about him is he's so, so athletic. I mean, you you know, it's just evident. When I'm recruiting a skill guy, whether it be a, a corner or a wide receiver, you know, you like to see a guy – uh, do multiple things, kick, return, punt, return, play different positions. And, uh, you know, with Trevin, it, it, you know, for a linebacker to have that versatility is really amazing. You see him with the ball in his hand, taking a direct snap at quarterback, playing running back, uh, you know, punt, return, kick, return, and, of course, playing linebacker. So extremely athletic, very versatile, and can really run. So really high on him. And, you know, it was definitely an area – you know, with Jamin Davis leaving early, coming out as a junior, uh, Chris Oates uh, having the, the stroke in the summer, really it was a position of need for us. So it was a big get for us uh, getting Trevin and definitely the type of young man, the type of player that could come in and contribute and play right away. How, 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 how good is it to have a guy like Jamin that you could just point to Trevin and say, hey, that, that could be you? Well, it's 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 really important, you know. Jamin being another South Georgia guy, and uh, you know, and and Jamin was really a developmental guy. He was not nearly, um, you know, th this polished coming out of high school. But you know, obviously, extremely proud of Jamin and the work he did, and and the way he developed here, and just had a had a really big year this year. And so we wish him nothing but the best, and I'm sure uh, he will have a great NFL future. Couple local guys of interest. Uh, Deco Crowdis was on the radar early as the next Rondell Moore, Wandell Robinson. I think he went off to IMG and came back. Um, and he never really got big and, and thick and strong like those guys did, but he's a shifty slot receiver. Uh, how excited are you to keep him in the state? Well, and another really big get for us with the Kel. He he's just a a guy that we needed that that juice, we needed that speed, and uh, a guy close to home, uh, you know, so, you know, that was really important. Frederick Douglass uh, has done a, a, a great job. Coach McPeak, they're, they're really, you know, putting out some players, and it was really important to keep the Kell home, along with his, uh, you know, his teammate and Jagger Burton, a, a fantastic, extremely athletic offensive lineman. So both of those guys were also a big priority for us. Yeah, Jagger, one of your highest rated recruits in this class and your offensive line next year going to be one of the best in the country in the NCC. Um, you know, how, how big an impact does it does it have on these offensive linemen to show them, you know, what you've built there? Because Kentucky is not known, you know, as O-line you like in Alabama or Wisconsin or Michigan, but you're building that. Yeah, we've been we've been that way the past, you know, two, three years, um, you know, been a been a semifinalist, to, you know, for the Joe Moore and, and uh, you know, really proud of that. And then consistency that we've played with that offensive line, you know, the past two, three seasons at Kentucky, very proud of that. And, um, you know, I think that's very important for a guy like Jagger uh, to see that. And I, I think it's it's also important to, to point out that Jagger's different. You know, I, I, we've been uh, very big, very strong, very physical, and Jagger can be that, but he's also extremely athletic. So, uh, you know, maybe a, a different uh, type of, of offensive lineman that, that really excites me in the way he runs, um, you know, and so, you know, really excited to add him. And again, a guy that, that we expect to be able to come in and contribute right away and you know, you talk about that offensive line, and that'll be headlined by a guy like Darian Kennard deciding to to pass on the NFL this year and to come back. And so he kind of sets the tone for us. A guy that's played an awful lot of football uh, could have been a very high pick this year, 
Um, but uh, definitely excited about uh, Darian Anchor in that O-line again. Two areas that I, I noticed since the beginning of your tenure there that have been good to you uh, are Georgia and Ohio. Um, tell me a little bit about, you know, the, the recruiting you do in Georgia um, and especially how you take away some of these Ohio kids that, you know, maybe Ohio State doesn't want all of them, but a whole lot of schools do. Yeah, I think, you know, Ohio has been the big talking point, you know, since I've been here. The past couple years, we're still, you know, Ohio is still and always will be extremely important to us as long as I'm the head coach here. But Kentucky's gotten better. Yeah. So, you know, so Kentucky has been big for us the past couple years as well, as I think the football is getting better and better each and every year here. The coaches are doing a great job and developing great high school talent that really wasn't the case eight years ago when I walked in the door and so Kentucky's become you know uh, better and there's there's more and more prospects here so that's very important Ohio will always be big to us and and as we get better as we've established ourselves in, in the SEC and, and playing better better football each and every year you know it's opened the door in Georgia and so uh, we all know the type of players that are in the south in general and that and certainly in the state of Georgia and uh, very, very happy uh, with the players that that we've gotten out of the state of Georgia. Yeah, I would, I would imagine the state of Kentucky uh, with the improved um, talent, you know, one of the reasons why you're able to stay in state a few times and, and possibly in 2022 uh, for quarterback. Tell me a little bit about your uh, your big quarterback in this class. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, um, you know, it's, it's just a – uh, you know, the state is getting better um, each and every year. I mean, uh, we signed eight. We signed eight uh, from the state this year. Uh, and, of course, bringing Wandell back, transferring back from Nebraska, that was a huge get for us as well. Uh, you know, an electric uh, guy with those ball with the ball in his hands and a great slot uh, receiver. So, uh, you know, Wandell's not – technically a part of this class but he's transferring back and that's a big get for us so uh but the state is getting better and better and kaya sharon is a is a is a guy from somerset that uh you know we're really high on you know watched him two years ago wasn't able to watch the games this year because of covid but two years ago i sat here and watched him in our stadium throw a last second uh touchdown pass to win a state championship and that's the type of winner the type of competitor he is uh, he's athletic. He can run. He can throw the football. So uh, very happy with Kaya. And you mentioned Wandell. How important is the transfer portal going to be to you? And, and how does it change the way you manage your roster? It, it's it's very important in how you manage it. It's a, it's a, it's a very important balancing act there to, um, you know, have a great feel for your roster and guys that maybe it's beneficial for both parties. Maybe it's beneficial for the player. Maybe it's beneficial for the program to move guys on and to have them, you know, look elsewhere and then, you know, bringing guys in. Uh, it's obviously, you know, extremely important uh, bringing guys in and, and plugging them in in certain areas where you need it. So it's a, it's, it's new to a lot of us, but uh, it's extremely important. And, uh, I think it is a challenge, uh, but it's something that you need to stay on top of each and every day. Yeah, and your class is one of actually quite a few this year I've noticed is, is less than 20. Do you think you're going to see smaller high school recruiting classes because you have to hold back some scholarships for the portal? Yeah, I, I mean, I, it was important to me. You know, it, it certainly was. Um, you know, I feel like, uh, you know, we're in a, in a, in a sweet spot right now. Um, we had. Uh, you know, with, with signing Trevin uh, today, and we had one other scholarship uh, papers out there, uh, but we're in a good spot, you know, for, for myself to leave a couple, um, you know, for, for the spring and, and, and for the summer that uh, is important to our program. I wanted it that way. You know, it was much different for me a year ago. I was actually over, you know, and, and had to manage the roster and make sure, you know, it all shook out by, uh, you know, by August. And that gets to be a a stressful balancing act uh, from time to time. But, uh, you know, I was pleased to have our roster at full strength. And I like where we're at uh, after signing day today, both in December and today. 
I like where we're at. I think we're in a perfect spot, a perfect number. Um, you know, there could be some slight attrition, you know, from our team, uh, but but also give me a little bit of room to add some uh, to the, you know, to, you know, from the transfer portal. How do you manage expectations at Kentucky? When you came in, there were none. Then you started going to bowl games, and then they became all of a sudden, when's this guy going to win the SEC East? When you have Florida and Georgia with such tremendous recruiting advantages, like how do you how do you juggle that? Well, I think you know, you know, we understand that that you know the advantages that that maybe a, a Georgia or Florida had, but we also understand the advantages that we have, and you know, we can't worry about uh, what other teams you know, maybe have or, or don't have. I mean, it, it's about Kentucky. It's, you know, our focus is constantly on, uh, you know, building our program and getting better each and every day, whether, you know, what I'm talking to you about, Mike, whether it comes to recruiting or roster management or it comes to the development of our football team. I mean, that's where my concentration is. Uh, we're, we're loving it. We're in here. I got some new offensive coaches. I'm really enjoying uh, putting that offense together and sitting in on those meetings. And that that's exciting. Gets the juices flowing and then getting down and getting around our players and watching them lift and watching them run and, and seeing them in the weight room and, and attacking that each and every day. That's what it's all about. That That's what your focus is. We're not really uh, uh, overly concerned about what other programs are doing because we can't control that. Uh, we, we know what we signed up for in the SEC. You know, we, we understand that very clearly and we understand the challenges. We embrace that and, and we're worried about Kentucky, and we're worried about uh, getting better in each and every day, and that's been a lot of fun. All right. I appreciate the time. Uh, for more Kentucky information, go to catsillustrated.com on Rivals, Rivals.com main page, and you can follow Coach Stoops and his recruiting efforts all the way. I appreciate your time, Coach. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate you. Thanks.